How many is glad to be in the house of God tonight? I'm excited about what God's doing. You know, we think about what we've been through, what we've been going through. But the Bible declares in the book of Ecclesiastes, there's a season for all things. Can somebody say amen? Some I have visited said that they would be watching online uh, this evening. And, uh, but I'm looking forward to when everybody's back in the house of God. We're not worried about anything but serving God and uh, just watching the church roll on. Uh, I uh, would like to say that we're keeping up with all the uh, leadership of the county and state and watching it looks like we're going to be able very shortly. Uh, I don't know if it'll work out Sunday, but uh, in the next uh, uh, week or so, hopefully we can get back to just a safety, what's called advanced safety protocol, which is just simply watching yourself. Amen. Knowing all the guidelines of, uh, you know, washing your hands and all these things. And some of the things that we've learned, we have took and... Um, are good things. We need to wash our hands. Can somebody say amen? We need good hygiene. Amen. I tell people, you need to wash your hands, brush your teeth, comb your hair. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I'm glad I'm a child of the King tonight. We'd like to say tonight, let's remember Sister Tina Todd in this prayer tonight. She needs a touch from God. Also, let's uh, continue to remember uh, Sister Baker, amen, in our prayers, uh, our shut-ins, let's remember them. Uh, those in the nursing home, let's remember them. This has been a tough or ordeal for them, uh, not to be able to see their loved ones and to be cooped up in a place, and you're going, why am I not getting visits? And so uh, those that don't have a TV in front of them, uh, certainly their mind can wander, but uh, let's remember them in prayer also. Um, I, I need you to remember my Uncle Lewis, uh, daddy's brother. Uh, there, uh, I understand about to turn him over to hospice. So uh, we all know what that involves. He's ready to go home, he said, but it's, it's tough. He's a special man. Uh, to me, and uh, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. But you pray for me and my uncle, my family, my uncle Lewis, Thomas. And uh, tonight we want to uh, anoint a prayer cloth for Rayleigh. Sister Rhonda, can you come up? Can we do that right now? How many knows that God is in control? I'm going to do something right now. If you feel uh, okay about it, I'm going to invite you to come and gather around. Uh, we can stay distanced if you want to, but uh, let's come and gather around and let's pray over this cloth. How many knows that God can touch Lily Rayleigh? Yeah. You know, she's too small to pray for herself. In the way that a child, I know, that little ones have childlike faith, but she doesn't understand what everything that's going on. And now I think we need to take and stand in the gap. We need to pray for her. And we're going to anoint this prayer cloth and we're going to believe that God is going to touch Rayleigh in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, there is hey, God, nothing I'm impossible God, with God. God. Now, God, I pray, oh, Lord, that you would God, overshadow God, greatly, Lord, you would guide the surgery, Lord, you would touch God, her father and mother and this grandmother and the family. God, I pray, oh, Lord, that you would move in a special way. God, let it be so, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, let it be Oh, 
Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout praise the Lord in this house tonight. I serve a God uh, that is able. We serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above. I, I quote it so many times, uh, but saints of God, it's up to us to have faith. True faith. We'll be talking about that in just a little while. You know, the Bible said that if our faith is where it needs to be, we can say to the mountain, be moved into the sea and it shall be done. I believe in that. I believe all things are possible with God. Can somebody say praise the Lord tonight? Brother Tom Jones is coming to lead us in the congregation of worship with Brother Jones. Able to stand and would like to stand. Let's stand together and sing. Hallelujah. Great old hymn at Calvary. Yes. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy that was great and grace was free, pardon that was multiplied. and liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last I said I learned. Then I trembled at the law I spurned. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to seated look to your neighbor and tell him I thank God for Calvary amen I thank God for Calvary if it wasn't for Calvary where would I be today well I'd be maybe still living here but I'd be lost and undone without Calvary the penalty of sin was great but the blood of Jesus was greater Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our ushers are coming to serve the people. Give as giving unto the Lord. And I know the Lord will richly bless you for all that you do. Isn't it wonderful to be able? I want to tell you, Otis Road, listen. 
If you want to walk over here on this property or walk around or uh, do whatever, walk around on that property and say, listen, this is ours. Amen. We don't owe anybody anything. And Brother Michael, you can start sending that report back in to the state office and say, zero indebtedness. Amen. Praise the Lord. The only indebtedness we've got here at Otis Road is to our Lord and Savior for the sacrifice that was made on Calvary's Hill. Amen. Brother Ted Williams, will you ask God's blessing on the offering this evening? Yes, Lord. Once again, we give you thanks for being able to come to your house to give you praise and honor that you deserve, Lord. Now we pray that you'll bless this offering, Lord, that it'll supply the need, Lord. Bless each and every one that's come out tonight, Lord. If they have a special need, I pray, pray that you will look to it, Lord. And those that's online, Lord, we pray for them too, Lord. We pray that they'll be able to make it back. For we ask it in your blessed name. Amen. Amen. Amen, an old one. Turn your radio on. Now we uh, we need somebody to come up with a new one. Turn your iPad on. Turn your computer on. Amen, praise the Lord. But there was a time when that radio, oh, yes. And uh, just groups were on that radio, some groups like uh, Velvet and Evangels. Amen. And, uh, but uh, just different groups, and we thank God for these uh, groups that are singing the gospel, you know they've been affected by this uh, virus and uh, a lot of the traveling and a lot of their bookings was just wiped out. So we need to pray for our gospel singers uh, that God would touch them and help them. And uh, just as soon as we can, maybe we can get uh, a good group booked here for a good gospel sing. Can somebody say amen? We'd like to say uh, that we are, uh, some had asked about Sunday night, our projection in our meeting, our staff meeting, uh, we had a projection of hopefully getting back, I believe it was, Sister Rhonda, of uh, the 1st of July, the first Sunday of July uh, on our Sunday night services. I, if that moves earlier than that, certainly uh, we will keep you informed on that. But that was a projection. We try to project when we can do things and uh, to try to make plans for our services and our functions. And also, I uh, would like to say that uh, we had hoped to do the men's fellowship breakfast in June. But uh, because of the construction still going on, it looks like we're going to have to postpone that uh, uh, until... Uh, a couple more months. We usually don't have one in July because of the um, because of the uh, July Fourth usually falls right in pretty close to that breakfast. But just as soon as we can, we're going to start back. Uh, hopefully, uh, no later than August with the men's breakfast. And I, I know the Lord is going to start blessing us, and we're going to get back. And uh, we'll, a couple years down the road, we'll say, what? COVID, what? What was it? Oh, yeah, we remember that. And uh, I'm sure we'll always remember in the back of our mind. But uh, this has been uh, a, a challenge. But through it all, we have learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, 
We've learned some ideas, uh, more ideas for ministry, and we thank God for what he's doing. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, and then uh, we're going to go to Romans and James, but we're going to start out uh, tonight in 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to start reading in verse number 6. If you'd stand for the reading of God's word. Let us go to the Lord in prayer and ask God that he would touch us tonight. You pray for me and I'll pray for you. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to this time when we open the word of God on this midweek service, Lord. We look into the scriptures and we pray, God, that the spirit of God would overshadow us. God, touch the minister of the gospel. Touch your people, O oh God, and uh, let us hear what the Spirit is saying uh, to the church. Uh, God, touch every person that is listening online, and we'll be careful to give you all praise for all that you're doing, for it's in the name of Jesus Christ we asked, and all of God's people said amen. And amen. Look to your neighbor tonight and tell them they're looking mighty good tonight. Amen. Looking mighty good tonight. First Peter chapter number one. We're going to start reading in verse number six. I'll be reading out of the King James Version of the Bible. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness. Through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach on a subject, thought God being my helper, just for a few minutes tonight. I want to preach on this subject, thought true faith, true faith. The Bible said in Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Where do we get faith? We get it by reading God's word. Can somebody say amen? Don't get quiet on me. My goodness, somebody shout glory real loud. Somebody shout hallelujah real loud. I'm going to tell you, I want to know somebody's with me. Somebody's alive. Amen. James chapter 2 verse number 17 says this. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Shew me or show me thy faith without thy works and I will shew thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that Faith without works is dead. I said faith without works is dead. Saints of God, I don't know about you, but I want the type of faith, like I said earlier, that can move a mountain. When I go into your house and you've got a member of your family that is sick, I want my prayer to be heard. I want to know that that the prayer that I'm praying is going to move God and God is going to move in the situation. So how can we have faith that will move a mountain? 
I want to talk about uh, true faith. Uh, you see, if there's a true gospel, uh, if there's a true faith, uh, if there's true things, uh, there's also false things. Uh, you say, can you prove that? That's what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, today we live in a world uh, where uh, there is what is called a relative truth, uh, if you will. What is that? Uh, relative truth uh, has to do with the situation. It's true according to the way the situation is. I don't like that kind of truth. I don't like that kind of faith. Relative truth. It all depends upon the situation. Matter of fact, I think the local newscasters and the local news today are starting to, to tell a lot of relative truth. Depends on their opinion and their ideas of how it ought to be. But saints of God, there's still an absolute truth. And it is still absolute. We serve an absolute God. We serve a God that does not change. And if this word of God says, I've got power through the blood of Jesus. I've got power through the blood. If the Bible says I have faith... If I've got faith, I can move a mountain. I, I believe I can move a mountain. Uh, I believe I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Uh, the great mandate of God uh, uh, was to go into all the world uh, and preach the gospel. Uh, uh, saints of God, we need to realize uh, there is an absolute truth uh, and the word of God is absolute truth. Doesn't matter what the governor says. Say amen, you nervous. Some of you politicians ain't amen me now. Doesn't matter what the mayor says. Come on, somebody, doesn't matter. Amen, doesn't matter what the mayor of Bryceville said, Williams over here says. Amen, doesn't matter what Brother Ted says. Doesn't matter what Brother Steve says. Doesn't matter what Brother Tom says. What matters is what God says about it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We need to get back to absolute truth. We need to get back to believing the Bible and the word of God. I believe in being wise as a serpent yet harmless as a dove. I believe in getting along with my neighbor. I believe in living peaceably with all men. But honey, there's some things that you've got to believe in. If you don't believe in anything, you'll fall for anything. Come on, somebody. I said, if you don't believe in anything, you'll fall. For you'll be like the wave of the ocean, tossed to and fro. I can tell you, uh, you know, a, a lip noodle is only good for eating. Come on, somebody. Consuming, amen. It's no good for hammering. A lip hammer is no good for driving a nail. Somebody help me while I preach. A piece of metal without any temper in it is no good. It'll Bend. But honey, if you'll get something that's rigid and firm, it'll hold, amen. There are many different kinds of faith. We've got denominational faith. We've got parental faith. We've got dead faith. Come on, somebody. we got vain faith. There's faith of devils. We've read it already. In James here, uh, uh, faith of the wicked men uh, and many faiths, uh, but it all sums up uh, all the two things. Uh, you've either got a true faith of God uh, or you've got false religion. Uh, you've got a false faith uh, in something that's not true. Can somebody say amen? There's a lot of ways, uh, oh, that we can worship God. I don't deny that. Uh, I don't say that we've got it all here uh, some uh, faith or some religions believe if you're not a member of their uh, denomination you're not going to heaven I don't believe that uh, I believe there's some good uh, people uh, all over this world uh, I believe there's some good uh, Baptists I believe there's some good Methodists uh, I believe there's some good Catholics amen 
I believe there's some good people that love God with all of their heart. Just because you've got something over the door oh, doesn't mean that you've got it or don't have it. But what is in your heart, you've got to have a true faith in God. Oh, I wish somebody would help me. False faith in most instances may uh, be only profession and in reality no faith and certainly no hope. Uh, true faith is demonstrated according to the proportion uh, of the faith that one may possess. Listen to what the word of God, go with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 verse number 6 it says this having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, uh, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the pr proportion of faith. Uh, oh, we need faith. Well, I want to look at false faith tonight a little bit. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 13, we're going to be going through a lot of scriptures. I'm going to give you a great bit of scriptures tonight. Listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians 13 and 2. It says this, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity. What did I say Sunday? Charity in God can be interchanged. Charity in God can be interchanged change uh, and have not charity I am nothing uh, Paul seems to recognize uh, the possibility of having faith uh, without charity uh, which faith would be nothing uh, James in the text uh, and in our reading tonight refers to faith uh, that is not proven by works uh, as being dead faith I don't want dead faith I want a faith that's alive I want a faith that I, I can go in and lay hands on a little uh, Rayleigh and say in the name of Jesus be healed. Uh, I want the faith uh, where I can go in uh, and say in the name of Jesus be healed. You say well brother Thomas if you had that kind of faith you would not ever have to preach any funerals. Let me tell you, until uh, the Lord returns into this earth, uh, de uh, death is the only way we can get from here to heaven. Uh, did you hear what I said? Uh, it is a fact of life. It is appointed unto man wants to die. Uh, don't, uh, don't, don't use death as something. Uh, but I do believe that you can lay hands on the sick uh, and they shall recover. Uh, and if they don't recover uh, and you you've got the right faith, if you've got true faith, uh, then it is God's will. Uh, he can see a lot uh, farther ahead than we can. I can tell you, I'd rather go to die. I'd rather fall dead in this pulpit and y'all bury me in the deep dark grave tonight uh, than to lay on my back the rest of my life in a, paraly a paralyzed condition. Amen. Saints of God, that's what Sister Bunny worries about. Uh, when I get up in them buckets and up in them uh, using the wrong equipment for the wrong job, uh, she said, Pastor, I don't mind you doing uh, the job, but do the right, use the right equipment uh, for the right job. And then if it fails, at least you've done what you know to do. Well, that's what we've done in this pandemic. Say amen, somebody. Amen. I've done what I know to do. I've always told you and I've told the people around here and I've told many people, do what you know to do and trust God. Yes, I'll wash my hands. Yes, I'll watch where I go and how I breathe and sneezing and everything else. But honey, I'm going to do what I can do. But then I'm going to trust the master. I'm going to trust the savior. I'm going to believe in him because my steps are ordered of God. And if you're a child of God, your steps are ordered of God. I'm a good mind to shout tonight. I feel God in this pulpit. Listen, we've got to have true faith. True faith. Listen. Amen. Uh, uh, let's look at some of the false faiths in the word of God. 
Simon the sorcerer believed and the Bible said he was baptized in water. Come on, somebody. That's right, you read it. Listen, let's turn to Acts chapter 8, verse number 13, real quick. Listen to what the word of God said. Simon the sorcerer, not Simon Peter. Simon the sorcerer, not Simon the tanner. There's a lot of Simons in the Bible. The Bible said then Simon in Acts 8 and 13 himself believed also. He was a believer. Come on, somebody. Listen to what the word of God. This is God's word, not mine. I've just preached it. It says, then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. It is said that Simon believed. There is evidence, however, that he did not accept Christ in his heart, but did confess him with his mouth. And Philip baptized him. Why? Because when he saw the gift of the Holy Ghost, he wanted to offer money in it and Peter said you were in the gall of bitterness and the bond of iniquity you can't buy the things of God honey and let me say this you can't buy your way into heaven you can't buy your way. You can't buy salvation. Uh, but you've got to have true salvation. Can somebody say amen? Uh, you must uh, have true faith. Uh, when he offered to purchase a power, uh, Peter uh, discerned him and rebuked him for his wickedness. Let's read it in Acts uh, chapter 8, verse number 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Because because thou hast thought that the gift of God uh, may be purchased with money. Uh, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Uh, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Your heart's got to be right in God's sight. If the heart ain't right, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you confess with your lips. Say amen, somebody. Confess all day long if your heart's not converted. The Bible said you must be born again. You've got to pass from death into life. You've got to be a new creature. You've got to have old things which have got to pass away and the new things have become new. Listen to what it says. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Listen, I believe he, 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 he uh, repented, it said, and then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Simon acknowledged that his faith was false by asking Peter to pray for him that none None of these things that he had spoken come upon him. But it was a turning of his heart. That's what it takes. I'm not Simon's judge. You ain't his judge. But I'm going to tell you his heart wasn't right with God. His heart was not right with the things of God. But he started to recognize that you cannot buy the things of God. You cannot purchase something of God. You've got to love God with all your heart. You've got to have a changed heart. You've got to have a heart that's right before God. You've got to do the best you know to do. And it comes from taking and being born again. We see another, the faith of the seven sons of one Sceva, which was proven to be false. Listen to what it says in Acts chapter 19, verse number 13 said then the certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists 
took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, uh, whom Paul preacheth. Uh, and there were seven sons of one Sceva, uh, a Jew and a chief of the priests, uh, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, I like this, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. I took and was pastor in 103rd Street and a boy I had a boy named Buchanan come preach for me. He preached a message, seven sons without any guns. Honey, I'm going to tell you, that's the way they were. Uh, seven sons that did ha didn't have anything with God. Uh, I'm going to tell you, true faith will give you power with God. Uh, I said true religion will give you power with God. Uh, and to know that you're born again, washed in the blood, uh, will give you the ability to look uh, and a sick person and say in the name of Jesus be healed the blood that covers all of our sin the blood that covers all of our sicknesses the blood that covers oh, all of our diseases, saints of God. We have power with God. These men possibly had made no profession, but they had seen miracles that God wrought by the hands of Paul and decided that anyone could do the same in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something. The only way you're going to use Jesus' name and be effective, how many times have I seen them? Sinners will come and they'll say, I prayed all night. And I want to say, why don't you pray to get right with God? Come on, somebody. Why don't you get yourself right with God? Why don't you fall down on your knees and get right? I'm not saying that we won't mess up. I'm not saying that we won't uh, uh, do wrong at times. But I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a desire in our heart uh, to serve God. And there's going to be people that's trying to do their best. Uh, you're going to try to do the things of God. Uh, I can tell you, I don't believe God's going to uh, uh, turn people away when they've got a true heart and a true faith. Uh, I believe he's going to say, welcome in the joys of the Lord. Saints of God, we as children of God that have that true faith, we need to look at the situations of life and know we have authority in the name of Jesus. Don't be scared and afraid to preach the gospel to a lost and a dying world. We've still got a job to do. We can't take, oh, I understand we had to shut in for a little while. We had to take and shut things down. Sometimes it does good to shut things down where you can see how things work. And now we understand that we can't do it without Jesus. We can't do it without God. We can't do it without the Spirit of God. We can't move without the Holy Ghost. Oh, you see, testimony is worthless without works to back it up. Say amen, somebody. One may say he has faith. His testimony may be long and sound reasonable, but without demonstration of evidence in his life uh, and a true testimony uh, it will never work are you hearing what I'm saying uh, it will never work uh, a testimony is no good without a test uh, every work's going to be tried in the fire uh, why am I going through this pastor uh, why do I face the devil uh, I'm going to tell you why it's because God uh, wants you to learn through your test you want to know why that I didn't I wasn't a valedictorian at Baldwin High School? Come on. I didn't learn from my test. Come on. Billy Joe, we going fishing. Yeah, we might leave me alone. Why? 
if I fail this test, my daddy will kill me. <laughs> That's right. Say amen, somebody. I can tell you, the reason we don't take and step higher is because we don't listen to God when he puts us through the test. If we go through the test and we'll listen to the voice of God and we'll learn from the things of God, uh, I believe there's something to be learned through this virus. Amen. Uh, I believe there's something to be learned through this pandemic. Uh, I believe everything that allows uh, God allows us to go through is for a reason uh, and for a purpose. Uh, you're not here just to take up space. Uh, you're not here on Wednesday night uh, just to sit uh, like a bump on a pickle uh, oh, uh, the only person can sit around tonight is sister Thomas cause she canned a bunch of pickles hey man she's gonna give me some too I love bread and butter pickles hey man and she worked all day and still in the house of God, 84 years old. I'm going to tell you, if an 84-year-old woman can can all day long at a hot stove and put up how many ever quarts of pickles and still be in the house of God on Wednesday night, what's wrong with you? Not you, you. You know who I'm, you're talking about. I've got to slow down. Listen. I want to talk about some good faith. I want to talk about true faith. Let's look at Moses. He had true faith. His faith was put on trial. There is a little said in the Bible about untrue or false faith. Just enough for God's people to know there is some people out there that are trying to sham and trying to do things the negative way. But I want to do things the positive way. The power and the evidence of true faith is taught throughout the Bible. The Bible is full of true faith men and women of God that love God and had true faith turn with me to Hebrews 11 and 24 Hebrews 11 and 24 listen to what it says verse 11 and 24 says by faith Moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ uh, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt uh, for he had respect uh, unto the recompense uh, of the reward he looked at the rewarder he looked into, into the God that was invisible. He looked into the God oh, of the Hebrew children. He looked into the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He would have joined, he would have enjoyed many advantages in life by being called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But he had faith for the deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt, which faith extended to to the appearing of Christ. Moses' faith was on trial during his childhood and his youth. And in the early years of his manhood, his faith was proven true in the deliverance of his people from Egyptian bondage. Uh, Moses' faith uh, was on trial when he left Egypt. Listen to what the word of God says uh, in uh, Hebrews 11 and 27. Uh, By faith he forsook Egypt, uh, not fearing the wrath of the king, uh, for he endured as seeing him uh, who is invisible. Let me tell you something. I honor the king. I listen to the king. Amen, somebody. I listen to the president. I honor the president. I can tell you, if President Donald Trump come in this building tonight, uh, I would stand in honor to him. Uh, I would honor him as the President of the United States. Uh, but saints of God, may I tell you, uh, when it comes between the President and the King uh, and the voice of God, uh, I'm going to listen to the voice of God. God is my King. Can somebody say amen? Oh, my goodness. The Lord instructed Moses concerning the Passover. 
It was all new. There was nothing in the in the uh, past similar to it. Moses uh, uh, believed God and called for all the elders of Israel and ordered them to take a lamb uh, according to their families and kill the Passover. Uh, he gave full instructions to all Israel uh, and observed it himself. I wouldn't be much of a pastor. I told you how to live and didn't live it myself. Say amen, somebody. I want to live right. I want to do right. I want to serve God. I want you, somebody to say, I've got confidence in my pastor. I don't want you to worry about your pastor uh, slipping around and doing wrong and fooling around and on the uh, backside of the road there and uh, slipping here and slipping there. I want you to have a pastor with integrity. I, I want to live with integrity. I want to serve God with integrity. When I'm in my quiet time when I'm in my closet and nobody's around I want to have integrity say amen somebody oh my goodness we need people with true faith listen I'm coming to a close come slow me down just a little bit Peter's faith was put on trial. Listen to what it said in Luke uh, chapter 5, verse number 3. And he entered into one of the ships, uh, which was Simon's, and prayed him uh, that he would thrust out a little from the land. Uh, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep. And let down your nets for a drought. Simon simply said, Lord. Master. We have toiled all night. And have taken nothing. I'm tired of putting shrimp on the hook. Come on, somebody. I'm tired of chasing the fiddlers around in the bucket. Trying to get that sheep head. Ted's been out on the jetties all day in his boat and drives up. Puts his boat on the trailer. Then I come up and I said, Ted, come on. Launch back out. Let's go fishing. Brother Ted would probably say, here's keys of the truck. I'm going home. Or here's keys of the boat. I'm going home. Fish if you want to. I'm out of here. That's what many of us would do. Come on, somebody. I'm hot. I'm sunburned. I've told. He wouldn't have been sunburned. He would have been moonburned. He told all night, the Bible said, all night long. Lord, I'm ready for Hardy's biscuit. Biscuits and gravy. You go out there if you want to. I ain't, but he didn't do that. He said, Lord, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down my net. Let me tell you something. When it don't seem like the popular thing to do, if God says do it, do it. The Bible said he enclosed a great multitude of fish. You know what happened? His faith was encouraged. There's going to be times that we come on a Wednesday night, Sister Nancy Pritchard, and we pray, we anoint cloths. And we're not going to see a whole lot of results with our eyes. But how many knows the just does not walk by sight? If you'll keep serving God, 
You know what the good times are is when we come in the house of God. And Sister Rhonda stands up and says, guess what, people? God answered the prayer y'all was praying about. You say, Brother Thomas, is it really mean anything for us to persevere with true faith? Let me just leave you with this on a Wednesday night. Two, around two and a half years ago, maybe a little bit, two and a half, close to three years ago, Brother Michael, we started talking around here. Boy, I sure would like to buy that property. Some of you said we sure would like to buy that property, but we've already blew it with the owner. We can't get it. Just ain't going to work out. We done, we done burn our bridge with her. Come on, somebody. But there was some of you that had faith. And you got by, hey, man, when I got a little weak, you said, come on, pastor. Nothing's impossible with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And today we've got the property and it's paid in full. I said, honey, it's paid in full. Somebody ought to shout. Glory to God. You say, I wonder why God don't give us more miracles. Uh, sometimes he wants to shout when he does. You know why my daddy done big Christmases? Sister Bunny, you had a good Christmas. You told me when you was a kid. You know why my daddy worked hard and gave us big Christmases? Every Christmas I remember, my daddy worked hard. He was a retail salesman in a store and could buy the deals. And man, he'd pack it in. I mean, we'd have a Christmas tree every year that was so full. You know why my daddy did that? Well, he loved his children. But you know what me and this girl right here on the piano did? Daddy, I can't believe you got that for me. Daddy, I love you, Daddy. I love you. Woo, glory, hallelujah. We didn't say glory, hallelujah, but we said goody, goody, goody. I've got it. And our daddy was pleased because he had give his children something they enjoyed. And they shouted about it. My Lord, I used to run around the house and act like a, a, a complete crazy young and uh, because I got a gift that I didn't think I would get was too much money. Uh, my daddy worked and sacrificed and my mama too uh, and they gave us a good gift uh, and we rejoiced and shouted. Uh, if I'd have went in there and I'd have folded my hands uh, and I uh, said I don't want none of this after a few Christmases you know what my daddy would have done? He'd said okay aren't you glad God doesn't work that way? But I'm going to tell you, when he does something good, we need to shout about it. I want you to stand all over this house. If you're watching online, I don't care where you in the kitchen. I don't care where you in the bedroom, wherever you are. If you're in the lounge chair, get up. Throw your hands up in the air. If grandma's sitting beside you and don't know what you're doing or what you're watching, don't worry. If she looks at you funny, throw your hands up in the air and begin to shout unto the Lord. Say, Lord, thank you for true faith. Thank you for a faith that is not wavering. Thank you, oh God, because I've got faith that'll move a mountain. I thank you for what you've done. And we're going to see greater things around this church because we believe in God with a true faith hallelujah hallelujah I want you to do something right now I want you to just point your hand in this direction everybody that will I want you to point your hand in this direction towards the front of the church. And I want you, if you've got a special need tonight, I want you to just begin to ask God right now. God, I've got a special need that I need you to take care of. God, I've got a special request. I've got an unspoken prayer request. God, you know what the need is. God, I'm asking that you're going to do it. Lord. Oh, God, we need 
need some rain, Lord. We need you, Lord. Whatever it is. Come on, whatever it is, just ask the Lord for it. Ask the Father for it. Believe. Not wavering. And you shall have it. Hallelujah. For the answer, have faith, have faith in God. Hallelujah. You see, true faith gives power, inspiration, determination, and a will to work for God. In return, the works prove the quality of your faith. Stand on the promises children of God do you believe in God if you do just wave at me all over the house God bless you tonight is our prayer God touch you tonight enjoy the evening tonight just believe God for a miracle God bless you you are dismissed hallelujah hallelujah glory to God thank you Lord